All right, Joaquin, thank you for having us here at Keysight stand and at WC Barcelona. I'm very excited to speak a little bit more about 6G. So let's talk about the evolution into 6G. What technologies do we have currently available that are going to build the path to, to the new standard? Okay, that's, that's a good question. We need to probably think first where we are in the 6G uh, timeline. Uh, the standard is not there yet. The standard will not come until late 20, uh, until early 2029. And uh, at this moment, we are moving from, let's say, early research phase where companies, research organizations look at specific technologies that can make their way to 6G. And we are now moving to a more system level view where uh, experiments move to uh, looking at the whole system end to end, how it works, how all of these different technologies can fit into, into the overall system. And actually, next week, there will be an important 3GPP meeting in, uh, in Seoul, in Korea, where uh, all the industry will be bringing their ideas for the new 6G standard. So that will be like the starting point for the standardization process. Brilliant. And I know a big topic is digital twins, right? And, and how they'll play a role or how they'll enable 6G and vice versa. So maybe could we start with the definition of digital twins for this? purpose and then how it will play a role with 6G. Okay, yeah, no, that's uh, a, a digital twin, uh, let's say from a purist view, a digital twin, it's a virtual representation of the digital world that is connected real time with how the real world evolves. It's like if, if you, you have probably seen all these uh, uh, videos where a person is put into a virtual world and when they move the, the, the virtual cartoon or whatever moves, it's the same, it's the same, but at a much more complex level, especially when you are emulating something like a, like a mobile network. Mm -hmm. Because in a mobile network, you have a physical environment that impacts how radio propagates, you have devices that move around the physical environment. You have different types of materials and the, the radio signal reflects in different ways depending on the, on the material itself, on the shape of the streets, the, whatever is there. Uh, and then you have all of the complexity of the uh, 5G or in the future the 6G system, all the base stations, the core network, all the protocols involved, the traffic, etc. So, uh, in, in these digital twins, uh, at the end of the day, you can have different levels of abstraction, mm -hmm. different levels of complexity, depending on what you want mm -hmm. to model. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can have 100% uh, replication of the, re of, the, of the real world. Sure, yeah. And when it comes to 6G, I know you mentioned on the timeline, we're working on those standards. You'll be at this m meeting next uh, week in, in Korea. But there are surely case studies or use cases live today that you could speak to or or tell the audience about? Yeah, well, if we talk about uh, use cases, I would say probably one of the most popular and people talk about a lot, it's uh, immersive communications. That's uh, kind of uh, multi-sensory communications where you can embed yourself into a virtual world where the other participants can all collaborate together. So that's probably one of the most uh, uh, talked about, uh, especially for the consumer and for the for the day-to-day -day of people. Then there are many other use cases more related to industrial and, and uh, enterprise uh, type of solutions. And uh, one of the aspects being uh, very much uh, discussed is, for example, sensing is the ability of the network to sense the environment and be able to detect what's around. Imagine the new uh, drone economy, where mm -hmm. drones will be around moving people, moving packages, whatever. Uh, if the network can track all of the uh, drones in the air, then uh, you have a map of what's happening in real life, okay. uh, in real time. And, and you need that to be able to handle 
that uh, big complex system. Yeah. So 6G and digital twins will come in to address that complexity. How optimistic are you that we'll come together as an industry and, and find the, the, the best way forward? Yeah, no, the digital twins, it's, uh, it's a hot topic in, uh, in CG. Uh, and uh, think about one specific topic that is really, really getting lots of hype today, that is AI. Mm -hmm. One of the expectations is that AI will manage the network, will optimize the network, will handle uh, how the network is perceived by the customers. You can think that an operator will not deploy a, an AI model in their network without really, really thorough testing. And digital twins play a big role there because uh, you are having like a copy of the network in real time, then you have your AI looking at what's happening there, uh, thinking, how can I improve this? And then it improves it in the digital twin. Look at how why it behaves and then eventually can decide to implement that in the real network. Yeah. But if you do that in the real network and you do something wrong or crazy, then you have millions of customers really, really upset. Absolutely. Well, no pressure there. <laughs> Joaquin, thank you so much for having us here in what I'm sure is a very busy week at MWC. It's always fascinating to hear all about what's going on with 6G and look forward to seeing your hard work come to life. No, thanks for coming. Thank you.